Hello guys and welcome to Linux Art. I'm sure many of you know the feeling. You love your Linux system, the control, the performance, the freedom, but then there's that one program. For some it's the Adobe Creative Suite, for others a specialized CAD program or simply the full version of Microsoft Office that's sometimes in very specific circumstances very essential. Sure, for gaming Proton has been an absolute evolution and Wine is also sometimes fantastic for many individual applications. But we also know it's often a struggle. It's not always stable and with complex program suits like those from Adobe you quickly hit limits with those solutions. So the alternative has always been the yeah, kind of nuclear option, a complete virtual machine with Windows and VirtualBox or VMware. I did a video about this one Windows programs on Linux, Windows and a virtual machine. This is my currently recommended option if you want to run very specific Windows applications on your Linux computer. But this option is also kind of clunky. You have a Windows window in your Linux desktop. The resource consumption is enormous. Just let's have a look. Here we see the window inside Linux Mint. It's not perfect, but it's a good way if you have some Windows applications you have to run on your Linux computer. But what if there was a way that combined the perfect compatibility of a VM with the seamless integrations of native apps? And that's exactly what a new extremely exciting open source project called WinBoat promises. I've taken a very close look at it over the past few days and in this video we'll find out if WinBoat can deliver this big promise. So what is WinBoat and what it is not? The first and most important thing we need to understand is WinBoat has absolutely nothing to do with Wine. It's not a compatibility layer that translates Windows API calls into Linux calls. Some articles online confuse this, but this is fundamentally wrong. WinBoat takes a completely different and much more radical approach. Imagine that WinBoat installs a fully functional Windows inside kind of a invisible yeah, self-contained box on your system. Maybe like the Linux subsystem for Windows, we have now the Windows subsystem for Linux. And this box is technically a virtual machine running inside a Docker container. The real trick, however, is what WinBoat does next. Instead of showing you the entire Windows desktop in a window, of course it can also do this. Let's have a look. Here we are in the apps and I can just open up the Windows desktop here and if we wait for some uh, seconds then we see the complete Windows desktop here and um, we can also yeah close this window again and we are back at our WinBoat uh, window but we can also open an app inside our Linux integration. Let's have a look for example if I open up the Window Explorer we don't see the Windows taskbar anymore we just see the Windows Explorer here and the rest is still my Linux system and this is in my opinion Opinion, a great thing and we can do this with every application we installed on this virtual Windows machine. Of course we can just go into the Windows desktop and install, yeah I want to sign in here, it's okay. It's sometimes mixing such things up and here we are now and we can just for example open up the file explorer also here or we can go into the internet install some application just like on a real Windows computer but again yeah this is only running in a virtual machine and what WinBoat specifically does is if we close everything up um, yeah we can just for example open the notepad application if you want and we are only getting the window here. We have now Notepad inside uh, Linux and this uh, kind of got integrated. The term WinBoat uses for this is seamless integration and technically that's correct. The Windows program are displayed seamlessly on the Linux desktop as we saw. However, we honestly also have to be fair. That does mean the entire experience from installation to daily use is already seamless and smooth. Uh, we'll get to that shortly. But let's have a look under the hood. The technology behind WinBoat. For all of you who want the technical details, let's have a look into WinBoat's engine room. This is a really clever composition, I have to admit. First of all, we have virtualization with KVM. This is the kernel-based virtual machine hypervisor for Linux. 
This is uh, essentially the gold standard for high performance virtualization on Linux and ensures that Windows runs on the CPU at nearly native speed. This is really, really good, this KVM. And we have on top of it an encapsulation with Docker. So this KVM machine is then packaged into a Docker container this makes managing, starting and stopping the environment very nice, clean and um, which is also very important, it's completely isolated from the rest of the system here. So I can just um, yeah, stop this machine here. We have a container we already see here and um, now Windows is shutting down and after some seconds this is exited and offline. Then we have our next brick. To conjure the Windows app Windows onto the Linux desktop, WinBoat uses FreeRDP. This is an open source client for Microsoft's remote desktop protocol. Others of you might maybe know Remina. WinBoat starts this Windows applications in the so-called yeah, rail or rootless mode, uh, which allows streaming only individual application windows instead of the entire desktop. And that's the magic compared to my solution here. I presented you some months ago um, because we always here have our Windows taskbar and yeah, all the yeah, full Windows experience and uh, with WinBoat, it's only streaming the specific application. And that's the magic with FreeRDP. And in the end, yeah, we have a very tight user interface, I have to admit, where you configure everything. It's an Electron app built with modern web technologies like Vue.js, a small Go-based server inside the Windows VM communicates with the main application, for example, to retrieve the list of installed programs. So this is very nice integrated at the current stage. But in the end, if we look over all of this, this architecture is a classic example of a technical compromise. By virtualizing a complete Windows, yeah, there is currently running a Windows in the back, WinBoat gains nearly perfect compatibility for Office and creative applications, for example. But however, the price for this is, of course, higher resource consumption and significantly more complicated initial installation compared to Ryan, for example. And then let us come to the installation process of WinBoat. And this is kind of clunky at the time, because before we start the WinBoat installation of Windows, we have to accomplish many prerequisites. I want to have a look at them with you. The first is a minimum of four gigabyte of RAM and also two CPU cores and 32 gigs of free disk space. This is honestly okay. And also to be admitting a bit lower requirements for this virtual machine. And of course the virtualization for your CPU must be enabled in the BIOS. For most of us, this is likely already done, but it's also a first hurdle for beginners especially. And there's a big part you have to have Docker and Docker Compose v2 installed on your computer. Important, not the Docker desktop package, but the command line version. And this is not always clearly communicated in the setup and can lead to errors, especially if we open up the um, help page at the time, we only get to the official Docker installation page where you have to search for a long time for your distribution and what you have to do. So in the future, I think WinBoat could automate this. And also our user must be added to the Docker group. So your user is basically getting equivalent root privileges on your system. So this could be also a big downside. You should be aware of that and you need a version three of free RDP, but this is kind of easy to install. Honestly, that's a lot for a Linux beginner. While there are guides, it's far from simple, yet just a small app store download. This is currently the biggest weakness in user friendliness. But once we have cleared these hurdles, WinBoat itself greets us with a truly slick and uncluttered interface as we see it here. Very easy, very nice. And then from that, the process is pretty straightforward. You click on next a few times and then your Windows 11 installed itself completely automatic. So you don't have to insert any activation keys, online accounts and such things. You just click on OK, install now and then WinBoat does everything in the background. This is, to be honest, a very nice experience and is a lot better than the method I showed you in this video here. So after installation, we essentially have a invisible Windows machine as we already saw. We can very easy install programs. Once they are installed on the Windows, WinBoat automatically 
shows them up here, so very easy. And also there's an extremely useful feature and this is the automatic integration of your Linux home directory. So this means you can access your pictures in the Linux pictures folder directly from Photoshop without having laboriously move files back and forth. So this is very nice, but however, Windows then theoretically has access to all your Linux data. So this also will be a very big point to consider because again, in the background, there's running a full Windows machine. So let us come to the big showdown Winboat in comparison to yeah, my method I showed you some month earlier ago. Both do the same thing, to be honest. They run a full-fledged Windows VM, that's it. Compatibility is therefore theoretically identically high for both, but the devil, however, is of course in the detail and in the user experience. While VirtualBox is an all-purpose tool, I would say, Winboat is a specialist. Winboat automates this seamless mode so we can just start an application and here we are a few seconds. So I'm doing not a cut in this sequence here. And you see, yeah, it uh, does take a bit. But besides that, yeah, it's very seamless. For the sole purpose of running a few Windows apps with the best possible integration without much fuss, the Winboat approach, I would say, is in the end superior or will be superior. However, anyone who needs full control over the VM wants to create snapshots maybe or run other guest systems. And this is of course much more flexible with VirtualBox. We also have there some additional functionality like um, throughputting USB devices. However, Winboat supports this as an experimental feature right now. But um, of course, yeah, VirtualBox is a lot older and a lot more major. You can integrate very easy file shares and do a lot more, for example, with networking. So this is great if you want to have a bit more control over your virtualized windows. I would say in the long run, Winboat could have the potential to overtake the Wittlebox solution. But at the current time, I would say we need still to wait a bit for this because for example, if I now open up a window and move it to another monitor of mine, then this doesn't work. So this Winboat application only works on my very first monitor. And if we compare Winboat to yeah, Wine, Proton or Lutris, I would say here we are comparing apples and oranges. Wine translate commands Winboat virtualizes an entire operating system. The big advantage of Winboat is compatibility, I would say, especially with complex applications like the Adobe Suite, Microsoft Office, also, of course, VirtualBox does that with Windows, which are deeply integrated into the Windows system and often cause problems with Wine, Winboat and VirtualBox are playing to their strength. The advantage of Wine and Proton clearly lies in performance and graphics, I would say. Wine has direct access to the GPU, Winboat doesn't, and is infinitely more resource efficient. For gaming, Wine and Proton is the only sensible solution, especially if it comes to 3D acceleration, of course, and Winboat currently yeah, has no GPU acceleration, which makes it very unusable for games and graphics intensive applications. So ultimately, Winboat and Wine are not real competitors, I would say. They will exist along. Um, they are tools for different tasks. Wine and Proton are for gamers and many individual applications with, for example, 3D acceleration. And Winboat is for yeah, creatives, maybe also developers who have to create um, Windows apps. I'm sorry for you. And Office users whose software simply yeah, won't run under Wine. Let us come now to the current problems and limitations. As promising all this sounds, we have to be realistic. Winboat is beta software and you notice it everywhere. Let's look at the problems and unfortunately the list is long. The main point of criticism, of course, we have no GPU acceleration, but yeah, we already had this point. And also we have at the other main point, which is fixable, the complex setup and dependencies. The complex setup could be automated more. It could provide you 
much more guidance to install the prerequisites you need. But we have also some other known bugs and issues. One of them I already told you, you can't use it really in a multi-monitor setup. If I now move a WinBoat app onto another monitor, but the first one, then they clearly don't work. They only show a black screen, so this is not good. We also have sometimes graphical artifacts around the windows, which is likely due to the IDP transmission, because here yeah, there's running a client and server on our own machine here. And we also have no integration to the Linux application launcher. So if we have, for example, Linux Mint, we don't see the Windows apps we see here in our Linux menu as an application. So this could be very cool, but this is fixable to be honest, um, but it needs some time, of course. Also what needs a bit time is WinBoat under Wayland, because there we have um, performance issues and also UI lags. So there's also very much to do there. And in addition, there are various other errors with sound scaling. Also the stability of individual apps. I also experienced that sometimes a app will crash inside WinBoat. So yeah, there is still a bit work to do. But all the things beside the GPU acceleration are things you can fix. And this is a good point, I would say, and a good perspective of WinBoat. Also, I want to defend the developer here. The community and other YouTubers have raised some of these issues and also security concerns. There are also some which are present, for example, sharing the personal folder with Windows, which many people won't like, and they reacted to that. This is a good sign and shows that the project is alive and developing into the right direction. So I would say we just have to give it a bit more time. To summarize, we are Windows is a brilliant idea with a promising, but at the time, very immature implementation. Let's get to my current recommendation, which I've always given. For the moment, you should stick to your tried and tested strategy I showed you in this video. If you absolutely need Windows productivity software that won't run under Wine, a classic Windows VM in VirtualBox is still the most stable and reliable way, I would say. You don't have the sleek integration, but you know what you're getting and it simply works. For gaming, there's absolutely no way around Wine, Proton and Lutris. Performance is crucial here and WinBoat cannot even re remotely offer that. So I think this is very clear. And its current state, yeah, WinBoat is a tool for enthusiasts, for people who like to experiment and are willing, yeah, also maybe to struggle through the installation and all the bugs. And there are plenty of them. So the question is whether WinBoat is good now, but whether it can be in the future. And my answer is cautious, but hopeful. Yes, absolutely. I do believe in WinBoat. The core idea combining the perfect compatibility of a VM with seamless integration in your Linux desktop solves a decades old problem in the Linux desktop world. And this has a lot of potential and I'm very looking forward um, testing WinBoat again, maybe in one year, then hopefully the world is a complete other one. What WinBoat has to consider is fixing all these bugs to simplify the installation further and maybe also address the GPU acceleration, for example, for professionals who do need a GPU acceleration, maybe to support the attachment of an additional GPU. This could work in a virtualized environment. This is called a um, GPU pass through. I think without that, it will always remain a niche solution for office software, but in the end, it could be very potential and even more potential when GPU acceleration is really good with it. This is a high hurdle, but if those are taken, there is no excuse switching to Linux anymore. And even now I would say there are very little excuses if you still want to use Windows because I created a series for beginners. So if you want to install Linux step-by-step, step, get along Linux, learn Linux, then have a look onto my YouTube channel. I did a playlist by Windows 10 Linux beginner series from zero to hundred. I highly recommend that to every person who wants to install Linux or is considering installing Linux. I personally, of course, can really recommend this. So in the end, what do you think about it? Have you already tried WinBoat? What are your experiences? 
write them into the comments. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe and see you next time. Bye.